gang, so you might notice that I am dressed as an 80s anime character for this one. Uh, that is because today I thought it might be fun, uh, especially since they're next in line, to take a look at the Asperia ships, which are the lore-wise. Asperia is a company, a human company, that recreates alien ships as quote-unquote authentically as possible. And so these are human-made ships that are made to look like alien ships from history. So this one right here is the Tavaran Prowler. And uh, before I get into what the Prowler is and what it does and all that, I was going to say that in the comments, uh, Andrew left a message that said, hey, do you take requests? Could you talk about the Banu Merchantman? and your plans for it, kind of your thoughts on it. And uh, yeah, dude, I um, there's only about 300 subs on this channel, and I think I get an average of about two to three comments. So yeah, I can absolutely take requests. Uh, so let's talk about the Bandu Merchant Man at the end of that one. And until we do, let's go ahead and talk about the Prowler right now. So the Prowler is a Tavarin dropship and what this thing's main duty i guess probably more realistically or more accurately it's a tavarin boarding ship and the reason it was called the prowler is because it was super 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 sneaky and it would fly up to human capital ships they'd never know it was there and all of a sudden they'd have a bunch of Tavarin boarding and fighting them. Uh, so yeah, Prowler is an app name for this thing. Uh, it's very cool, very alien of all the ships, even the Van Duel ships. Uh, Tavarin feel the most alien. So you can carry 16 troopers in these sort of jump seats here, uh, standing jump seats. Yeah, it, it can carry uh, 16 people there, then it has a pilot and a co-pilot. Co-pilot can control the turret that's on top of the ship. If there isn't a co-pilot, then the pilot controls both guns. So uh, the Tavarin make use of air shields. So even if this door is open, and you'll notice everybody in the standing sections here uh, has a door directly in front of them. So it's it's a very, very quick exit to the ship. So, I mean, you can just jump out and you'll kind of notice how this wing is just about head level. That is quite intentional. You can use this as a shield. And yeah, that, that is by design. Um, but one advantage of the air shields is that when the door is open, the ship isn't vented into space. Now, unlike the Valkyrie, this thing can't carry a vehicle, but uh, this is more a SEAL Team 6 um, stealth Blackhawk. Think of it that way. Oh, is the door not going to close? This was... Yeah, this, this was an issue the last patch, too. So once those are open, they don't close, at least not through that button. I think I can close it with my binding, though. Got room for guns up here. Uh, Copilot C is right there. You got a couple more, quote unquote, jump seats here. Then you can get in and out of the ladder there. And when I get out of the ship, I'll go that way. So Prowler, super, super sneaky. That is not in the game yet, unfortunately. The stealth features for this game are not in right now, which is really too bad you got components right there uh but eventually they will be and this thing will just be a mild shadow in space and that right there is why the prowler is in my fleet uh so if you've never seen this thing power on before this is kind of cool so you'll notice i can't see out pretty sweet right so let's go ahead and take a look at the ship this is what the ship looks like uh, this is landed mode. Um, got pretty big guns. This is the default loadout, so it's got those, uh, whatever they call them, quick strike guns or whatever. I almost always pull those for repeaters. Um, same with the top. I think, I think one or both of them are ballistics. I think these are ballistics on top. 
Uh, I almost always pull those for energy. Uh, but in theory, this thing is going to have a very low signature. So it is going to be able to light strike. That's what the name of the gun is. So in theory, this thing is going to be able to really sneak up onto ships. And so this will be used by either bouncers or hounds in order to board an enemy ship. Uh, that is sort of how I see this. So again, I saw myself. You are clear to launch. Again, I saw myself as a dropship pilot, which is why I initially got this. And this kind of dropship is exactly the kind of thing that I wanted to fly in the verse. So uh, I just thought it would be cool to get one of these. Uh, one last thing I want to show you before we take off is you can sort of see the round things that almost look like um, the hover jets from the Matrix uh, that the Nebuchadnezzar in those kinds of ships would use. Uh, that's not accidental. Those are actual grav levs. So what this thing can do is come up to a ship and use those to kind of hover near it. So let's go ahead and switch modes here. So now we're in flight mode. Of course, the Tavarin are big on things looking like birds. So get out of here. So a little bit about the history of this thing. Um, it flies pretty nice, but when it first dropped, it was another one of those situations where uh, kind of like the Aries, it flew ridiculously nice. So not only did it fly well, but it was about as maneuverable as an arrow or a gladius. Uh, and with its gun makeup, um, yeah, that, that was pretty sick. Uh, so the default loadout on this thing is mostly to kind of take advantage of being stealthy. It's not stealth A but you'll notice that it accelerates very slowly and that will be a flight model that stays in character as this thing goes on. This thing will probably have low acceleration just to keep its signature down, um, but it'll be very, very, very quiet, which is surprising given the size of the ship. Uh, but looks wise, this is, this is one of the prettier ships in the game. Uh, it's starting to feel its age, but it's rad. So while this thing isn't, if you go and you look at uh, an older video on this thing, I, I just kind of wanted to bring out that story of the, um, the flight characteristics when this thing dropped, because you can still find some videos where people will say this is the uh, meta fighter. And that's what they're talking about, that sort of brief window when it dropped and CIG had their oh shit moment, this isn't gonna work and kind of dialed in its uh, maneuverability. And now that we're in space, I'll go ahead and I'll show you the maneuverability. Not terrible, but um, its ability to change direction is a little more reflective of its mass now than it was. It still has pretty substantial guns. So, I mean, this thing is not a joke in combat. It's just you're not going to be popping light fighters and out maneuvering them like you could during that brief window. It it flies like a larger ship. And so, again, just kind of going back to the carnival and how I see this thing used, the carnival is a true neutral organization and is far more defensively minded than offensively minded. Uh, so it's going to be very rare that we're just going out and attacking someone and boarding their ship and stealing their stuff. So chances are that this will be used by bouncers to board a ship that attacked the carnival rather than to go out and attack a ship. So here, we'll just go ahead and fire everything. So you can kind of see, yeah, big guns. Let's take a look at that from the front. And I think, I think the guns on the wings are gambled, but uh, I usually go fix just because you're gonna punch someone, punch them hard. Uh, but yeah, so as far as the carnival is concerned, I would see this as a boarding ship for someone that attacked the carnival, load this thing up with Marines uh, while their ship is in soft death, they're shut down 
or even while it's still live, they may not see this thing coming and they're focused on the other bouncers. You can land a bunch of Marines and take the ship with much less fight. Uh, so kind of the same way the Tavarin used it. Uh, but again, um, not the Band of Merchantman. So I wouldn't be flying this thing. This thing is massively overpriced in real life. So I, uh, I do not suggest buying this ship with real money. Um, it is very cool though. Uh, I'm not, they'll definitely sell it for money in game eventually, but I would assume just based on the price, they're going to make it extremely rare in the verse, which would make sense. Almost has a Star Trek feel from that angle. Uh, but again, landing animation. Here we go. Guy has a cool transformation to it. Pretty neat. And last thing I'll show you. Getting down this ladder here. Oh. That work. <laughs> well, okay, that, that wasn't quite as impressive as I thought it would be. Uh, let's let's try opening that rather than. Uh, all that animation is broken. I guess I'll have to submit a ticket on that one. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of the doors on the ship aren't working in the current patch, apparently. But there you go. Um, Tavar and Prowler, pretty awesome boarding ship. But note that unlike the Legionnaire, you board by going EVA. You don't board by docking up to the docking ring, uh, which I think is both a plus and a minus. Um, a plus because hacking doesn't give away your position. They don't know they're being boarded until your Marines go in and your Marines can board through any of the entrances, not just the um, not just the airlock uh, downside. This thing probably won't be able to take quite the hits that the Legionnaire can. So um, balance that out. This thing's armor is its stealth. So I used to have a Vanduul blade. Uh, but I melted it along with a bunch of ground vehicles and smaller ships like starters that I had so that I could pick up a galaxy in the latest. Damn it, Orison. Quit damaging my ships. Uh, but I melted it so that I could get a galaxy along with a few others. Uh, so it turns out the only Asperia ships I still have in my hangar are Tavarin, which I am OK with. So. This is the Talon, which is the Tavarin light fighter. Uh, this is a size three gimbaled gun. You can pull it and put on size four fixed. I do not recommend doing that for whatever reason. As maneuverable as the ship is, it's kind of hard to get it on target. And because it is a light fighter with the size four, you're going to get a lot fewer shots than the size three. So you're better off going with the size three, just kind of counterintuitive there. Although that seems to be the meta of this patch. So I like to call the Talon a semi modern fighter. It has some elements that a lot of the modern ships have, like uh, the physicalized buttons you can open up. Uh, you've got a gun rack here, so kind of like the Gladius there. Close that. And then it's got a bunch of, I think it's got components on this side. Is this side storage? Uh, I don't remember how to open this side. I think this side, I think that's actually the same thing. It just, the whole thing rolls to the starboard side. Uh, components are, if I remember right, there's some along the spine and there's some down here. Um, it's kind of a long ship for a light fighter. So, I mean, if it was just this, that would be about the size of an arrow. But when you add in the full length of the wings and the fact that once it loses one of these wings, it starts spinning uncontrollably. I'm not sure if that has been fixed for 318, but whoa. 
Okay, we just teleported it up into the seat. I'll take it. Again, like the Prowler, you'll notice that the canopy is clear from this side, but solid from the outside. So there's that. Uh, this is the Oculus Acellus paint job, which is kind of cool. Not my preferred. I usually run uh, Crimson with this one. Um, let's go ahead and get this thing up and flying. So one of the things I like to do in this ship, especially when I'm uh, fighting it in space, is when you put it in quote unquote VTOL mode, you can pull the wings in and just to kind of give you an idea what that does to its profile. There's wings out, there's wings in. Not a huge difference. Uh, kind of makes a difference from the top. Uh, again, not massive. Hopefully that makes a difference when it's actually flying. It's got those little bird-like legs. Again, Devarin are bird people, so it's kind of their whole bag. And those little feathers there come out when you uh, pull up the landing gear. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Flies pretty nice, like all Tavarin ships. Kind of a shame that we only have really two examples of Tavarin. Um, kind of really Thank wish you. that they'd... Well, I guess we have three Tavarin ships, technically. Uh, but I'd love to see a, like, mid-sized Tavarin ship that's civilian. Like, uh, I think something Freelancer to Connie size that's a cargo transport or something. Or even like a, well, I guess it wouldn't be a troop transport because that would be the Prowler. Um, but yeah, all in all, really like this one. It is not the meta. Uh, it really can't take a hit. And if you pop a wing, like I was saying, it'll just start spinning um, like port or starboard and it's uncontrollable. Sometimes you can get it to control by pulling the wings in and sometimes that makes a difference, uh, but nine times out of 10, that doesn't work. So you're just kind of stuck. Again, all these little frilly bits sticking off of it actually make it a little bit easier to hit than the arrow, uh, but its profile isn't huge from the front. So when it's facing you, it's not bad. Uh, again, two size threes, which are a little bit bigger than you would expect to find. Uh, gimbaled size threes, a little bit bigger than you expect to find on a light fighter. It's got four missiles that I believe are size one. Let's check that. It might be size two. Tempest, those are size twos. Really a pretty ship in its element. But now that we're out and about in space, let's go ahead and get it through its uh, flying. So let's get that out of the way. So there you can see pretty maneuverable. Uh, so you can give fixed a shot if you uh, if you want to. This thing is about as maneuverable as an arrow. So uh, yeah, pretty, pretty good in that sense. It's just the those wings are squishy. And once you lose one, the ship becomes completely unflyable. Also, another thing that I've noticed that's really weird is more than any other ship, NPCs seem to really like to ram this thing. No idea why. It is the only ship that I've had where almost every single time I engage in a dogfight in this thing, I'll, I'll be doing really well and the NPC will just up and ram me, which insta kills you no matter what they're in. There's those light strikes, which are size threes. Um, other than that, it's it's a pretty good fighter. It's just uh, it's it's not the meta because it's a little squishy and um, the wings make it broken uh, again recommend running gimbaled mode so right there auto gimbals and uh size threes as opposed to fixed size fours if you're really good at the um at pointing at your target and hitting that little box or if your target's a little bit bigger 
uh, fixed size force might work for you. Um, I kind of like the auto gimbals, even though they're a little bit of a crutch. Uh, I've said this before, I'm not terrible at dogfighting. I've been in other games as a dogfighter, just it's not going to be the loop I engage in on the regular. So, uh, yeah, if there's a tool out there that I can use that makes it a little bit easier, sure, why not? And again, nine times out of 10, I'll be in my BMM. So uh, it's good to know how to dogfight, just like it's good to know how to mine or salvage or do engineering. <laughs> Speaking of an arrow, actually, this will be a good uh, comparison. Hang on, let me get next to this arrow and I'll kind of give you a size comparison. So here's an arrow and well, we we kind of lost the light, but you'll you'll kind of have to use your imagination. But side by side, you can sort of see that the body, if you just take the body of the town, it's about the same size as the arrow. But once you add in all the extraneous crap, it's it's probably about double the size. You tuck in the wings, um, at least the front profile is similar, like the the talon is a little bit thicker, but not huge. But the Talon is definitely a bit squishier than either the Gladius or the Arrow, which is why it is not a meta fighter. But one day they're going to balance that all out and it won't matter. Okay, so I won't spend as long talking about this one. And as you can see, it's another Talon. But in this case, this is the Talon Shrike. Now, you might be asking yourself why I have both versions of the Talon in my fleet. And it's because they're both useful in their own way. Um, I also think the Talon will be useful in swarms. So you get a bunch of these, get like when I say a bunch, I probably honestly mean like three or four, and then you have like six or seven regular talons and you got yourself a stew going. Like that is enough to give anyone serious issues. So what's the deal with the talon strike? This is the cobalt paint, by the way. I usually run the crimson paint on the Talon and the Cobalt on the um, on the Shrike, just so that visually I can quickly tell them apart. Crimson, big surprise, is uh, bright red. Uh, but the difference with the Shrike is that it has gimbaled size two guns, uh, which seems like a pretty big step down until you realize that it's got this sort of weird thick section here. It doesn't have missiles hanging off the bottom because all of this is a missile pod. And now I'm going to show you kind of the cool thing about this ship. And again, all other attributes about this ship are identical to the Talon with the exception of one thing. So I'm not going to talk as much about this one just because I'd just be rehashing what I was saying about the Talon. And I want to leave some time to talk about the bandage. Oh, actually, they might be gimbaled size ones. God, is that right? I thought they were gimbaled size twos. Oh, no, 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 they are. They're gimbaled size ones, and you can make them thick size twos. Again, much like the regular Talon, I'd recommend just leave them at gimbaled. So there. You've got 24 arrestor missiles on this thing. 24 missiles on a light fighter. For someone expecting a Talon, a regular Talon, and you just start streaming missiles at them, uh, 24 of them, that's gonna catch someone off guard, especially if when you're doing it, you're flying with a couple regular Talons, it's gonna be really hard for the person in that ship to figure out where all of those missiles are coming from. They're, they're going to have to keep like cycling targets until they figure out it's you. And then they kind of need to pick their poison between the regular Talon with its size three guns or size four if somebody's good at shooting or 
you with all your missiles. And once somebody, you could start playing around with the Talons running size three distortion guns to kill someone's shields. And then the Shrike starts nailing them with missiles. Uh, kind of a nasty combination. So the idea is that these things attack in swarms. So they will come at a target and just overwhelm them. I would love to see a Tavaran medium fighter and heavy fighter, and we'll probably get one eventually, but we haven't gotten one yet. So for right now, maybe this is, maybe they reach heavy or medium status by just swarming you with their smaller ships. So who knows? Uh, but yeah, Town Strike, pretty cool ship. Uh, when used in conjunction and properly, which I think you could say that about any ship in the verse. So one last thing I'll mention about the Talon Shrike uh, that's probably important to keep in mind is that if you look, there's only two missile holes. So when you're lining up your missiles, if you set up more than two, it's going to fire the first two, wait a heartbeat and then fire the next two. So if I were to have it set up like that with four missiles, it would fire two, wait a beat and then fire the next two. You're almost better off just leaving it at two and calling it good. Your lock is a little faster with four, but honestly, with 24 missiles, uh, you're almost better off just shooting them one at a time and just keeping your target dodging while your wingman takes them out with with guns just the missiles keep them like target lock missile incoming missile incoming and they're just their whole board is blowing up and so they're worried about the missile when they should be worried about the guns that's kind of how i use this ship but arresters are not a joke that is a size three missile so um yeah 24 of those not kidding around one last thing I'll say about the uh, Talon is just given the nature of the Prowler, even though its uh, profile doesn't look stealthy or anything, I would hope that this thing kind of gets a stealth profile to it, would kind of give it its little niche among the light fighters, but nothing's confirmed about that. As far as we know, what we have here is what we're getting. All in all, not a bad fighter. just not meta and again i think the talons would probably more than any other light fighter or probably any other fighter really benefit from teamwork i think that's kind of the idea is you team a few of these together even a handful like five if you had three talons and two of these or two talons and one strike, even that's gonna be pretty devastating. You've got four size threes and 40, well, 24 missiles if you just got one of those things. That's it's a pretty deadly combination. All right, let's get on to the BMM. I don't really have a script planned out for this, kind of have a few ideas outlined for how I'm gonna to talk to it, so. Uh, if you just want to see the ships that are actually in the game and you don't kind of want to hear my um, spitballing what the game will eventually be like, uh, feel free to check out now if you're curious about how I'll use my Banu Merchantman, kind of the history of the ship and where I think the plan is for it. Uh, hang tight. Okay, so this one will be hard for me to keep it relatively brief because this is one I've basically been thinking on for about a decade now so wish me luck right uh i'll talk a little bit about the ship as if i actually have it in my hands right now so i'll start this off with a little history go into what they did with it in concept and production uh talk about why they probably put a pen in it and then wrap it up with what i think the bm is uh the bmm is and isn't and then how I personally plan to use my own. So with that said, let's uh, go ahead and take a shallow dive into the BMM. So it's a uh, shallow dive on a shallow dive sort of 
Diveception. So anyways, uh, keeping it brief, the Merchant Man is one of the oldest concepts that hasn't been realized yet. And it was actually dropped in the Kickstarter, I think a couple of stretch goals before the Endeavor, uh, which those two, I think from the Kickstarter, the last two that haven't been made yet. Everything else on the Kickstarter has been made now. The initial concept made it sound like a smaller ship, so clipper ship and blockade runner, which both suggested something roughly around Connie sized. But then some of the stats and the concept art started dropping and the thing carried as much cargo as the whole sea, but internally. So even in the early days, CIG was kind of all over the place on what they thought this thing would be. They didn't really have a good sense of the Banu style guide. And when they rolled out the Defender, it seems like they finally kind of came to terms with what the BMM would be, too. And they start sort of zeroing in on a singular design and kind of marrying themselves to one piece of shape language. Uh, since blockade runners tend to run under the radar, have low viz or speed, or the ability to sneak by a blockade, uh, a big-ass monster ship kind of goes away from that. So instead, it seems they tried to tie it more into the lore they've developed over the last decade or so for the Banu, uh, which are similar to Bedouin traders. In this reconcept of the BMM, it leaned in heavily uh, to that idea of kind of the the moving trade bazaar, uh, moving it from a fast moving medium largest ship to the mobile bazaar, and then the go to ship. Uh, go to capital ship of the entire Banu race. There was a few of us kind of holding our breath a few years back when John Crew said that they were exploring all options on the BM shortly after the Carrick dropped. And in that case, the Carrick, pretty late in development, they decided it was a hair too long to fit in a certain metric or a certain hangar metric or landing pad. And so they kind of squished it down. So it took. Um, if you look at the concepts or sort of like the, the, it wasn't even concepts, the ship was pretty far along, uh, looked pretty sleek and drawn out and the, it kind of looks a little smashed now, if you look at it and it's, it's because of that sort of downscale. And so for the Carrick, the downscale didn't really change what the core of the ship was, um, on the other hand, a downscale on the BMM would have meant less cargo or fewer shops, the possibility of becoming too small to be taken seriously as the ship of the line that the Banu needed when they went to war, which the Banu Merchant Man is the ship that when the Banu go to war, as opposed to an Idris or a Javelin or something like that, they just roll out the Merchant Man's is uh, so there's a little bit of worry in the community that the BMM would be downscaled and that CIG might concept up something else to fill the role uh, the BMM had once had. Uh, basically, they'd reduce the ship size to more closely match its price, then grow the ship to what the concept and lore had it as. So it was kind of surprising in a good way when CIG rolled out the new concept. and It was clear they had actually grown the thing up to fill its role and lore rather than shrink it down. Unfortunately, it appears that CIG kind of hit a dev wall. Initially, I thought the choice of making the BMM the next big ship to roll out after the Carrick was both surprising and unsurprising. Uh, unsurprising because the concept was so old, but surprising because it seemed to have a lot of speed bumps in its way. Uh, but the mention of Banu Slavers in the Squadron 42 Vertical Slice, which I think dropped around the same time, made me think that they wanted it for a Squadron 42 asset. And so I was thinking that it might have gotten fast track because of that. And I guess that wasn't the case because CIG would bail on it about three years later after making the decision to start it. They, they dropped it about uh, late last year, 2022. Um, Honestly, I don't 
blame them. Uh, the BMM has a lot of the same problems that the whole C does, and then some. It's too big for the existing economy. The NPC buyer-seller market doesn't exist yet. The true economy itself doesn't exist yet. Stores aren't really in yet. NPC shopkeepers only work about half the time. And the Banu aesthetic is kind of a work in progress. Uh, on that last point, uh, CIG would need a not small team of devs throwing in a lot of work to capture that sort of unique piece of art feel the merch man would have to have. It's not a character, even a Polaris with a well-defined sort of human style guide. And it's not something that's, I'd say, completely alien in it's also the representation of both the opulence and the very pinnacle of an entire race's culture. So yeah, no pressure. So I'm not totally shocked they put a pin in it for now in favor of something a little easier to tackle like the Polaris. I, I would be lying if I said that it wouldn't have been really cool to be cruising around a newly dropped pyro in my brand spanking new merchant man. Okay, so that's where the BMM came from and kind of the story behind its concept. And now I'll go ahead and I'll talk about what I think the BMM is and isn't. So this part is pretty straightforward, so I'll try to get through it quickly, but this is tied pretty heavily to what the carnival is and isn't. And those two in my brain are very much married, so... uh Apologies in advance if I kind of use them both interchangeably and hopefully it'll make sense in the end. First off, the Merchant Man is a floating bazaar. It has a bunch of shops in it that may or may not follow any kind of order. So you might have food next to live animals, next to clothes, next to knickknacks, next to weapons. So you just kind of get the idea. It's just a riot of colors and sounds and stuff. And if you think of... The way that I like to put it is that the Kraken Privateer is kind of a strip mall with its own sort of junky parking lot. Uh, the Merchant Man is much more of a flea market in a big, beautiful warehouse. Well, kind of think about it as somebody setting up a flea market in a cathedral. Uh, you'll never know what you might find. It might be a treasure, it might be junk, but even just the experience itself of going there and looking at the stuff is interesting in and of itself. Um, finally, I'd say that the Merchant Man is what I would consider a blue water ship. And so a ship meant to operate out in the deep, deep black. While it could certainly land at the big landing zones, it'll probably excel the most far away from civilization centers, bringing things to the backwaters that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. Uh, that doesn't mean they wouldn't raid with those civilization centers to get things to bring them to the backwater though uh so for what the bmm isn't uh these are probably pretty obvious but it isn't a battleship so sure it has those twin size eights that pop out of its nose which are one size larger than the guns hanging off the front of the nautilus for scale which look ridiculous on the nautilus they are big big guns and it's also covered by other fairly big guns, they'll probably have good armor. But the fact that it carries as much cargo as it does means that it will be a target. And I'll get back to this in a minute, I think. Uh, Merchantman captains will need to keep that target status in mind as they flit around the verse and plan accordingly. On that note, and this probably doesn't need to be said either, but this is not a solo ship. Even with NPC crews, you will definitely want at least a few fellow humans crewing this monster. It's just too big and too complex for otherwise. I'm not saying you couldn't run it with an NPC crew, just that you're probably asking for trouble if you do. That said, if you're sticking to the safer systems like Stanton or Goss or Terra or so on, you'll probably be Fine, but if you want to push out into the deeps where this thing was made to go, yeah, you'll probably want some people with you, like real breathing people. As for what we know the BMM now has, the major elements are the shops, the enormous cargo bay, the meeting room, and the hangar. Still, the focus of the ship is those shops and that cargo. It 
should really be used as it's designed as a big mobile bazaar, at least in my opinion. And that's that's actually a pretty good segue for how I plan to use the Merchant Man in the verse. Without getting too far into the logistical and security specifics, I effectively grew the idea of the carnival around the idea of wanting to put some protection around my Merchant Man. And as that fleet kind of grew, it became obvious that those ships would also need their own logistics, their own support, and that kind of set me on the path of what would make up a truly independent fleet. And at the same time, I've run a few org structures in the past in other games. Some of them are pretty big or were pretty big. I wasn't initially looking to do that in Star Citizen. In fact, when I got here, I joined another org because I kind of burned out on my previous one. But as this idea grew, I started to think of ways to rethink how a big org could uh, not only function, but how it could be formed. And Banny Lore actually gave me some more footage on this and more ideas. For the Banu on one of these ships, people have their roles, but it's not really a leader. Humans don't really work that way, being tribal in nature, but I wanted leadership a bit more inclusive than other orgs I've been in, with the members having a lot more voice than they would have otherwise. Uh, I talked about this a bit in my carnival vid, and I'll put the link above so I won't really rehash it here, but basically the carnival is cellular in nature. Uh, you pick, you, you make a group with friends or people you want to play with that's roughly around, call it three to 10 people big, and that'll be a cell. And then you'll just kind of nominate one of your people to be the leader of that cell. And then your cell is gathered into a group of cells, which is called a supercell. And each of the cell leaders of that supercell will then choose one of their number to represent that supercell as a whole. Uh, and then this goes up to a cluster, which is a collection of supercells, and the supercell leaders pick a busker to represent them. Clusters are gathered together in a supercluster. And the buskers of those clusters will pick a leader called a barker. And the barker has the same voting power in the carnival that I do. So um, I'm an unelected leader of the carnival, but the elected leaders will have a vote and all have a vote. And obviously, if the carnival gets huge, my vote will be just one of many, even though I'm not elected. I just have one piece of the puzzle, not the whole puzzle. And that to me sounds a lot more fun. And so for me, the idea of the carnival very much grew out of the idea of what I wanted to do with the Merchant Man, which is to basically, uh, I nerded out and kind of wrote my own character history here. My character's heavily influenced by the Banu and the way they run things. And so the carnival is very much run like a Banu Suli. And at its heart, I want my Merchant Man to be that bizarre. Uh, so a little bit about me Don Steeler, the human on the other end of the uh, microphone here. When I was a kid, my dad was stationed in Ankara, Turkey back in the 80s, and we'd go to the bazaars every weekend. And that's really what I'm wanting my ship to be is kind of that bazaar or those bazaars I used to walk around when I was a kid. Uh, well, that and the flagship of the carnival and the two are pretty tightly intertwined. I plan on having the Carnival Caravan very much live up to its name. So we'll travel system to system, trading and doing the things, and then move on to the next system before we overstay our welcome. That's kind of important. So cells and supercells and probably even clusters and super clusters, uh, if the system is rich enough, like a Stanton system, will spread out across that system. So there'll be trading, salvaging, mining, exploring uh, for a certain amount of time, probably running bounty missions um, or even counter missions, even criminal missions. Although uh, the goal is to keep our noses relatively clean when we leave a system so that when we come back, we're not chased off. Uh, but we'll move on to the other system before we overstay our welcome. And that's kind of my ideal life in this game to sort of see everything, do everything, travel the whole the verse in a big merry band. Uh, but we also don't want to be a target. And on 
that point, there has to be enough muscle behind the carnival that people would rather trade with us than pirate us. And that's a pretty fine line to walk, kind of a dangerous line, honestly. And while I don't see the carnival as a pirate org, I really see it more as true neutral in the purest sense of that. Uh, the carnival also won't ask questions. So we'll sell missiles and components and weapons to anyone for money or trade. And we won't necessarily ask where they got those goods from. So in this case, ignorance is bliss when you're neutral, right? So yeah, kind of like a real carnival. We're going to be a little bit shady. For my personal merchantman's role in that massive fleet, and to be its flagship, its core, kind of its beating heart. Uh, Knight 55 has an Idris, a Kraken, a Polaris. We have big military ships in our fleet that I own. I mean, I have a few ships myself that you've seen from this series that could probably crack a merchantman in half given an opportunity. Uh, so my merchantman will be the icon of the fleet, but not necessarily the core of its muscle. I see my merchantman, um, which I, I would throw the name out there, but given that CIG hasn't really uh, gone back and clarified their naming conventions, I don't really want to throw the name out there onto the public just yet. Uh, but anyway, I see my merchantman at the core of the Carnival fleet as being a neutral trade center where anyone even mortal enemies can come and trade and see the sites and maybe even negotiate with each other. And that that's what I kind of want. I want us to kind of be the neutral arbiters of the verse. Uh, so you know, one, one other little dream that I have for my merch man, which my, may or may not be possible. I want an NPC crew with at least one of every alien race. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the Van Duel one will probably be the hardest. Uh, anyway, that's all I have on that for now. Um, I will definitely have a lot more to say when the actual BMM arrives for real. Uh, so that's all I got for this one, gang. Thanks for sitting through that little rant. I hope it didn't come out too disjointed. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, yeah, catch me next time.